I'm an Emmy Award winning camera operator with over 20 years experience shooting at the highest network levels. I've shot Super Bowls, Kentucky Derbies, Olympics, and even WrestleManias. I'm your host, Howie Zales, and I never thought of myself as an entrepreneur until recently. I even own three businesses in the television production space. Are you afraid to start your own business? Are you struggling? Do your friends and family not understand what you do? The Unexpected Entrepreneur Show will share stories and inspire people with the entrepreneurial bug to take that daunting leap. Welcome to the show. How did you get into this? It was super unexpected. That's why I love the title of the show. And I say, man, if they can do it, I can do it. I got to figure out how to spell that damn word if I'm going to be calling myself an entrepreneur. I still can't. I, it's so funny. My father was selling knishes and <laughs> sold my mom a knish. That's amazing. What a sale. You had red hair for about the first 20 minutes I knew you, and then it went gray. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Unexpected Entrepreneur Show. Hope you're doing well. Today's guest is a designer, a marketer, an author, speaker, podcaster, and the chief lizard at her company, Neon Lizard Creative. Welcome to the show, Rebecca. Thank you, I'm really excited. How are you? I'm doing great. I've been crazy busy and excited to start 2022. Let's make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Super grateful that you were able to take the time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. Um, so when we were talking the other day, you know, I wrote in my notes, there's got to be a really great story behind the name of your company and I just have to hear it. <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember, ne well, I guess the name of the company came from the fact that I can do all sorts of different kinds of design. Um, I went through so many years of designing and I worked for sign companies and art places and corporations and agencies. And at one point I realized I was kind of a chameleon of design. I could design anything. And when um, I tried to do the name chameleon, it just is too hard to say. And I don't think I could spell it kind of like on your uh, preview there. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I decided to go with lizard and do neon lizard and it's stuck with us and been doing it for 30 years. That's amazing. So um, have you ever had a, a, a real full-time job? Have you been an entrepreneur since the beginning? Tell us. No, I, I like I said, I, I went to, a, I graduated high school at 16. I knew what I wanted to do at 12 um, because of uh, Darren Stevens on Bewitched. And uh, I graduated high school at 12, college by 20, had my first creative director job by 23. From there, I went to a six color press, um, art galleries. I went to, um, corporations, Eastman Kodak, um, worked for several different agencies, and then finally in 98, decided to go out on my own. Like you, I, I, I knew very early on what I wanted to do. Back in high school, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So having direction is great, right? Not, there's not many people like us that can say so early on they, they had you know such direction. That's excellent. I know. Um, I always tell my kids, find something you love to do. <laughs> Right? Figure out a way to make money. Because it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> exactly. Right. I love it. As, <laughs> as an entrepreneur, you see you see a problem and part of what being an entrepreneur is solving that problem, coming up with a solution. What problem did you see uh, when it came time for you to open up your own business that you needed to solve? The biggest thing I saw was greediness. It really, really bothered me that... Um, Many of the, not many of them, some of the companies, the last one particularly that I worked for, I can say that because they're out of business now, but um, the last one that I worked for um, was more interested in making a dollar than he was actually doing great work. And although I was doing the best work I could, he was overcharging them. He was maintaining rights to everything. So they had to buy things back, which I always thought was just wrong. And just from a moral standpoint and just, you know, ethics and all that kind of stuff, I just didn't like the way it was being run. It was so much like a car lot. And um, I'm sorry to all the car dealers out there. But um, <laughs> I wanted something that gave back. I wanted something that did better than expected. 
So when people came and said, hey, I want a logo, I'd say, oh, great, that's great. But not only am I going to give you the logo, I'm going to give you the files, I'm going to give you a style guide. We're going to make sure you're set right so that you can really take your business to the next level and not nickel and dime you to death. So that's kind of what I wanted to change. So what does Neon Lizard Creative do exactly? What do you, what do, you do for your clients? We are a full service firm in the sense of every, pretty much everything but video. Um, and uh, podcasting and things of that nature, but anything that you can see, such as the website, you, such as the social media, such as your print, such as catalogs, such as cards, banners, trade show, anything like that that you can see, we can do. Um, the thing that we do best is come in as a CMO and say, here, let us handle it. You've got 45 different vendors. Everybody's spinning. Nobody knows what they need to do next. Bring us in. We'll help get everybody rowing the same direction, make sure everything is consistent. Well, if we need to jump in there and design something, we can if you need that. But if not, we can at least help you get it under control. I'm dealing with a company right now that they've spent million, literally a million some odd dollars and they, they're still all over the place. And we're going to come in and fix it, <laughs> get everybody get, looking great. Awesome. Now, um, why should why should a business or a company hire instead of hiring someone full time one or two people full time to do uh, marketing for them? Mm -hmm. Why should they hire your business over hiring a full time person? Well, if it's for CMO work, we'll use that because that's kind of a new thing that we're offering. But the CMO, a CMO that you hire runs about one hundred seventy four thousand a year. That's kind of pricey, right? Um, even if you hire a fractional CMO they're usually between eight and 15,000 a month. That's, that's the normal rate. We can come in as our team, especially if we're doing all the design work, we can come in as a team, handle it all, do it all for much less than that. And it all depends on how much you need, of course, but we can come in and do it all and, and, and make your life so much easier because we like to handle the details. We like dealing with the vendors. We enjoy doing all of that to us. Making your life easy makes us happy because you're happier and then everybody's tickled. <laughs> now, I know that uh, your business is uh, obviously it's owned by you. It's woman owned, which is mm -hmm. excellent. And I know that um, talk about the marketing and branding side uh, with a different attitude, as, as you called it. <laughs> well, I'm kind of I guess I'm, I'm, I'm an old goat, so I'm a little bit cocky in the sense of there's a million different ways to do things. And most of the time, like I said, the industry will sell you whatever they can sell you. And they'll say, oh, you need a logo? Okay, okay here you go. We're going to go design a logo. And they redesign the logo. I don't think you should design the logo first. I think you have to really get down deep on who you are. What do you stand for? Who are the people that you can serve best? Um, I get real, real um, spicy about demographics and avatars because those sep I think those words that we use in our industry separate you from the human on the other side. I think it's more important to, yeah, you can use demographics to narrow the pool, but let's get down and know it is who it is that you can best serve, who aligns with you, who it is, who is it that lights up when you call them? Th that's somebody you're going to go extra, extra hard to make sure they're happy. So that's the client you can best serve. So I believe that you've got to define who you are, what you offer, who the client you can best serve is, what it is that you do that is going to rock their world, and get all that figured out first. You got to know where they hang out, do all that stuff. Because, again, most companies design the logo for the person that hired them. And that sounds mm. like, oh, that makes sense, right? But right. no, really, you should design for that client's client that they will be attracted to your client because of how you've designed it. Not just that Joe, the CEO, liked it. Does that Understood. make sense? Okay, Great so advice. when you Great design advice. for the client's client, that is how a designer should work. And I don't know anybody that does that but us, personally. But that's how I think you gotta start out, get your messaging, everything down first, then you start designing for that client's client. So you have two people to research. And then once you get that done, you create that brand and create that all the brand visuals to make sure everything is consistent from your website to your social media to everything. So visually you're consistent, verbally you're consistent, your salespeople are saying all the same things. 
that you're also answering the phone correctly in the way that represents your business. We call it live in the brand style. Um, when you are a brand, I believe that you should have values that you champion as a business. And when you champion those brands, you need to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So I'm a big believer that you need to do that <laughs> in order for your brand to be authentic, for people to resonate with it, and to draw the kind of people that you want to you. Does that make sense? Well, you've just given, I, I can't even say how much advice you've just given. Uh, <laughs> and your perfect segue to my next question is how to go about creating a brand. What advice would you give to someone just starting out a business or themselves in creating a, a brand? Well, first, I'd say call me, but you know, I, I'm a little yeah, selfish. Besides, right, right. <laughs> no, um, what I usually say to do, and I'm going, I've got my book coming out pretty soon. We'll talk about that, I'm sure, in a little bit. Yeah. But uh, we basically start out saying, you know, get that message down, get that, know who you are. Um, I have six points that I tell people to do. Um, the first one is, um, ah, let me get back here. I, should, I know this all by heart. I don't know why I'm doing it, but, um, what do you, so finding out your why, knowing your why, just like, you know, Simon Sinek says, going deeper than just your surface why, but going deeper because like mine was kind of odd in the sense of, I thought, oh, I just love to design, right? Well, actually what it ended up being once I went dug deeper and deeper and deeper, it's like, well, why do I want that? Why is that important? It, why do I not feel like I'm, you know, getting everything I want? I realized that I wanted to make people happy because it made me feel worthy. This, and mm -hmm. it, that was kind of a shocker because I didn't, I didn't want to really want to be that vulnerable about things. But when I discovered that, it was like, wow, that that makes sense. Why, why I take, you know, work myself to death to to make that other person happy. So when you get down to those deeper levels, then you're able to manage your messaging. And when your messaging is done, then you're able to really speak to people in that vulnerable fashion. You're able to do it correctly. Um, I have a story. If I can kind Love of stories. jump in there and tell it, if you don't mind. Please, um, it's please. a story. I, <laughs> it's a story I call my grandma's roles. And my grandma was the sweetest little thing. She's a little gray haired, sweet, sweet pea. I just love her to death. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look it up so I don't forget anything on it. Cause it's such a great little story. There it is. Okay. Uh, she lived with us. She lived in our basement. My parents had redesigned our entire basement, um, into a beautiful apartment for her. And they had put this big round counter around it. And every day I'd come home from school, I'd slide down the spiral staircase and run and hang out with her after school. And oftentimes she was baking and she always made these rolls and these rolls made, they made Olive Garden look like bricks. It was, they were just so <laughs> incredible. They were so soft and they were so wonderful. And every single time they were wonderful. She was just, just like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld about her rolls. She was so strict about how she made <laughs> them to make sure that they turned out perfect every time. And so I tell people, that's what you need to do for your brand as well, is that you follow a specific recipe because a, a brand in and of itself is, is okay. It's great. It's important. It is the basis on which everything else rotates, but it needs to evoke the emotion of the people that you're talking to. So a brand is, needs to evoke emotion. And I'm using the parallel of following that recipe so that you build a brand that evokes emotion because when you have that strength of emotion of your brand, then when you take a piece part and you put that out into the world, and I call this the breadcrumb trail, <laughs> so you put that little piece out there and you market it, and then you put another piece, people consume it and they want more, and they consume that right. and they want more. So it goes through and you have the breadcrumb trail that takes them where you want them to go. So the brand is there to evoke emotion. It's more than just a logo. It is the persona of your entire business, your values, and your goals um, and you evoke that emotion and your marketing is the breadcrumb trail that leads people where you want them to go if your brand sucks your marketing will not be near as powerful does Great that make advice. sense totally. okay so that's my grandma's role thing <laughs> and then we follow that up with learning how to love on your clients in a way 
that mm -hmm. they want to be, they're, they're just advocates. They're so, so loyal. So you take this wonderful brand, your wonderful purpose, your, your incredible gift to them, right? Because you are, you are giving them the best of you. And you're taking that and you're giving, putting it out on the market. The market is eating it up and they come to you. And now they're your client and they love you and you love them. How can you make it better? How can you put some butter on that roll? <laughs> and so <laughs> we came up with something we call the heart principle. And it just happens to be what how we do business anyway. But um, I was going to a Valentine's speech where I was speaking and I wanted to roll it into some kind of Valentine thing. So I came up with H-E-I-R-T. And it went over really, really well. And I thought, you know what? I am going to see if I can flesh this out a little bit. So we have since done that. And it now we have a five-part series of things that you can do to love on your client to put the butter on the roll. Awesome. Are you hungry yet? <laughs> <laughs> they were so good. <laughs> But we, like That's I said, we, I, I believe in all that prep work, then you do the logo, then you build the brand around it, including how people answer the phone and everything else. And then you put the butter on the roll and then butter on the roll is the heart principle. And that leads into the book if you're ready to go there. Great advice. Great advice. Yes. So uh, your other project, your, your book to uh, catch the eye, grab the heart. Uh, talk about mm -hmm. that. Well, the heart principle, like I said, was born when I did that speech and it kind of, as it has evolved, we decided to do more of an intentional brand style where that's why I'm talking about living that brand style, but be so intentional about it and have things in place that you want to share with others and you want to do to make their life better and their business better. So when I get on the soapbox, I say, you know what, as businesses, we are leaders. It is our dad burn job to lead. People are looking up to you, live up to what they're looking up to. Make sure that you're ethical and that you're, you're doing good things and you're helping your employees and supporting your employees and building a strong culture and you're giving back to the community at large. That's important because there's a lot of people, as, as I say, there's, there's no, no loss of magnanimous messaging, but there's very few people that actually live what they say they do. Um, so it's really important that you do so. Um, so we do uh, H-E-A-R-T for heart. Um, and H stands for honor. Well, how do you honor people? So we have five different ways on which you can honor people. And it's different than what you would think. It's more like really, really listening with intention, listening for those business details, the pains, the hurts, the, the goods, the bads, listening for those personal details, listening for those passions. Why do I listen to those things? Why am I looking for those things? That's, is that any of my business? <laughs> <laughs> but the way we look at it as if I know that my client, oh, I'll use this other client. I had a client who, um, was an, an elderly memory care home. And in the process of our conversations, in one of our very first conversations, she talked about how, you know, so many of the memory care folks were just kind of a step back from reality and that you could hand them a stuffed animal and they didn't know it wasn't a live stuffed animal. And they would love and care for that just like if it were alive and how important that was to them to have those kinds of interactions. Well, six months later, when they did their grand opening, we remembered that statement and we came to them with a baby doll that we actually had made that feels and looks like a real baby, as well as a bunch of stuffed animals and things to give to them. We listened and we honored them by giving them something we knew that would make her cry. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> she was so touched by that. But who does that? I mean, we, it's, a, it's an important factor to, to honor the people that you're dealing with. Maybe you go walk in a walk because your client's child has Down syndrome. Maybe you right. uh, send a meal over to their offices because they got hit by a tornado <laughs> or, or, you know, or something happened or everybody's been sick. Just different things that you can do to honor and love on them just to let them know that you respect them and, and you're glad they're in your life. Does that make Amazing. I can't quite tell you that makes sense. So that's one honor. Yeah. Um, there's several other ones. I won't go through all of them because that's why you can read the book. <laughs> but um, <laughs> E is elasticity, which is different than um, 
I don't know anybody that uses that term, but the way I look at it is the more you know, the braver you are, the more you can stretch, then the better you can serve. But it's just chalk packed, just packed with stuff and packed with a lot of wisdom. I'm a big believer in reading and consuming a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? Just any kind of wisdom I can get from anybody who's out there. I am just a well, sucker for any kind of a webinar. And uh, so there's a lot of really great tips and tricks and, and quotes and things of that nature excellent. that I've collected over time that I think everybody should use. Excited to read it. Uh, again, yeah. uh, Paul, you want to put that up again? We'll put the title of the book up so everyone can see it. Um, Am I talking will it be available in <laughs> audio in audio form too, or is it just? That's a mind? great question. I, I might be talking to you. I don't know. I'm, I haven't planned on it just yet, but I might. Excellent. I want to see how well it goes over on uh, Amazon first. And a lot of it, I just, I, it, to me, it's a mission. It's more than just, oh, this is the way we do business. It's a mission. I think every company needs to live their values. And this is a way of doing it that it's laid out in a way that you can pick one and say, okay, we're going to work on honor this month. And that's what Excellent. the purpose of it is, is to train the young ones coming up and to help those that are already here. I'm all about that. I totally yep. couldn't agree anymore. I know. I know. I'm That's why we get along. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited to read your book and please let, let us know as soon as it comes out. Um, what inspires you, Rebecca? You know, as an entrepreneur, what inspires, what inspires you? you? Yeah. What inspires me? Challenge. Tell me I can't do it. <laughs> yep. Tell me that it's, it's not going to happen or nobody does it that way. I'm kind of, I've always been a little bit of a rebel. And so I think that is a, one of my big, big things that I'll just attack if I've been told I can't sit back and watch. <laughs> Excellent. So Love it. Love it. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time and I wish you the best of luck with the book coming out soon and we're excited to read it. And I, again, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> well, today's show was brought to you by the team at Veridity Entertainment Services. Uh, we're here for all of your live stream and event and production needs. Why let any social media platform control the ads on your content? Constantly evolving algorithm changes can have a huge negative impact on your following. All you need is your own content network and Veridity Entertainment Services, VES, can help you create that. Content delivery has never been so easy and powerful. Our state-of-the-art technology can help you create an amazing private labeled experience. We create virtual or hybrid events and corporate meetings with guests from around the world to take your content to the next level. Control, elevate, and own your own content. Well, again, thank you to Rebecca for joining us today and thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next week.